So my name is Ella and I'm on the um, Bachelor of Religious Education um, and Music course, but it also falls under the umbrella of Bachelor of Religious Education and History and the Bachelor of Religious Education and uh, English. Um, I'll go through that a little bit further now in a second. Um, it is a four year concurrent course and um, it is in DCU in the St. Pat's campus. And there's also some classes that are on the All Hallows campus, but it's just across the road. So it's a nice walk to get your steps in. Um, I do enjoy it. So as I was saying, there are three different codes for this course. So the Bachelor of Religious Education in English is DC 010. Uh, the Bachelor of Religious Education and History is DC 011 and the one that I am on is the Bachelor of Religious Education and Music and it is DC 012. So as I was saying it is a concurrent teacher education course so it's a four-year post-primary teacher education degree so that means at the end of the four years you will be um, qualified to go and teach in a secondary school in Ireland. Um, so the word concurrent means that the academic and professional formation of the teacher is integrated into all four years. So you'll be doing your religious education as a subject, um, for me music as a subject and all of my teaching uh, qualifications along with that. Um, so this is in contrast to the consecutive model where students first might do um, an undergrad in their subjects, so an arts degree in um, like my subjects, religion uh, and music, and then go on to do a master's in post-primary teaching. Um, but that might take you five or six years to do, whereas this course takes you four. So uh, the CAO points, the things that everyone wants to hear uh, for the first one, uh, the Bachelor of Religious Education in English, the code is DC010. Um, as you can see, the points have gone up and down a little bit. Um, in 2018, there were three, 350 around that mark. They went up and then to 429 in 2020. They went down a bit and then a little bit fluctuating. So if you are looking to do that course, you might want to aim around the 420, 430 mark to make sure that you get into that, uh, that bracket in 2024. Uh, the same for history. It just goes up a little bit. Uh, so points everywhere are going up. Uh, last year, the points were 411 for the Bachelor of Religious Education History. And then you can kind of see there with music down the bottom, uh, the points were 420 last year, uh, the highest they've been. Um, so you'd want to be aiming around the 450 mark just in case um, to be able to get into those uh, those places. Um, the music course, there is um, an audition required uh, just to make sure that you're able to play an instrument or you can sing um, along with that. So just make sure that you have a look at that extra one if you are thinking of music as well as religious education. So um, education is involved with this course completely, um, which is what I really like about it because um, I'm not just studying music, I'm not just studying religion, I'm also studying the education side. So we learn about the history of ed education, philosophy of education, some of our modules include psychology, sociology, lots of um, hard to pronounce words, educational technology, try to spell these up at the top of a classroom, um, curriculum and assessment. Oh no, it's my screen not being shared anymore. Okay, maybe I'll stop sharing and then share it again. Let's see if this works. I'm just gonna check in. Perfect. We're back, brilliant. Okay, I'm just gonna change the screens just to make sure we're all good. Can you see me changing them? Nope, okay. I'm going to stop sharing one more time and reshare it again just to see. It might be a problem on my end. Okay. Let's have a look. So, can we see the slides here? Perfect. And we can see, I can, you can see me changing them. I'm just talking to someone here. Perfect. Okay, thank you. So as I was saying there, these are the um, different modules that you'll see in the under the education bracket. Um, 
educational technology and we do lots of stuff um in our course regarding ai learning with ai um how to teach online we've lots of modules on online teaching just like what, what happened with covid um we have curriculum and assessment so how the assessments are being made and how the curriculum is formed and then um obviously the religious education and then either english history and music or music so we do 30 weeks of school placement overall. So I'm in third year at the moment and I'm almost finished my eight weeks of placement. This is my last week. So this year I did uh, eight weeks of placement in a school. Um, it was really nice. I did two weeks of context and engagement placement uh, before I went back to college. So that was getting to know my school, getting to know what rooms I'd be in, getting to know the management, getting to know the other teachers, um, trying to figure out what I'll be teaching um, over uh, my placement, which was just before Christmas and just after Christmas. Um, so it was really nice to be able to get that feel for the school before I went in on the first day to teach. Um, last year we did six weeks of online placement, um, so I did two weeks of context engagement in a school to get to know it, and then I did four weeks of online placement where I was teaching online, um, learning how to use Zoom, Google Classroom, um, Microsoft Teams, all of that, so it's nice to know that before you go into a school you know all of the, the techie stuff behind it, because I'm not too techie myself. Um, and then in year one, there's micro teaching and peer teaching online. So uh, you go, you will go as a group to a school um, with your peers in your course and you will teach um, uh, in a micro teaching environment, team teaching. And then in year four, there are 14 weeks of placement. So two weeks of context and engagement at the beginning and then a 12 week placement slot. So all of your semester two in year four is a placement. So you're, you're finished your semester in semester one after Christmas, you're finished going to college and then you're back into a school, uh, which is really nice uh, that, they, that they do that. Okay, so um, a thematic approach to professional placement. So we like to have a theme for every single year that we do our course. So year one is teacher as a communicator. It's very important that we know how to communicate with each other. Um, year two, teacher as an assessor and curriculum maker. Um, we del delve into the background of making curriculums and assessing. Year three is the one that I'm in at the moment, teacher as creative innovator. So it's taking all that stuff that we learned in year one and two, building on it and being a little bit more creative in that department. And then a teacher as a researcher and reflective practitioner is um, year four. We also have a thesis to do in year four. Um, so that's one thing that might um, put a workload on you but um it's it's not an easy course it's it's tricky um, and that's what happens when you get a four-year course and you're out teaching in the last the last year um so there are the titles and the themes for each year so post-primary teaching subjects so as i explained with the different course codes there are different subjects that you can pick from um english you'll be covering fiction poetry drama and film um, so everything is on the junior and leaving certificate courses, as well as more. Um, in, uh, history courses are medieval to the modern period, so that's a huge, huge stretch of history that you learn about. In music, we learn music theory, musicianship and performance. There's a huge, huge, huge push in performance in music. Um, we're all, uh, all of the music students are in a choir. So years one to four are all in a par as part of a choir and we get our um, module points uh, for singing in a choir, which is really nice. We also learn keyboard and um, we develop another instrument or you can develop your voice on top of that. And there is a practical at the end of each year. Um, and then in religious education, we have theology, religious studies and ethics So that covers world religion, morality, ethics, um, and you get to choose some optional modules as well to add on to that. Um, a major attraction of this course is it's a four year course um, it study takes place in small class groups within the larger university context. So we are in. Um, DCU uh, is in uh, Glasnevin, that big campus, but we are in um, St. Pat's campus, which is a little bit smaller, but we still have all of the access to the events that goes take place on uh, 
last seven um, and All Hallows. So um, for me, for example, there are 12 of us in third year in our music course. So 12 people are doing religious education and music in third year. But we also have everybody else who is doing the religious education. So religious education in history and religious education and um, English. So um, that those bigger lectures um, are take place in bigger rooms and the smaller ones take place in small rooms. So you make friends really easily. You see the same people every day and it's really nice to have um, a large context and a small context. So there are lots of different careers. Um, as I was saying, this does go straight into a uh, post primary teaching degree. You have your degree in your two subjects, um, but then that can also lead on to becoming a principal, a deputy um, and school leadership positions. Um, you can do postgraduate studies in different subject areas, education, chaplaincy, guidance, counselling, journalism, law, media. And then um, there are lots of NGOs, which are non-governmental organisations. Um, and then you can just go on to do academia. Um, like my lecturer was telling me that she never thought that she'd end up back lecturing or that she'd be back, uh, back in college, but in, on the other end of the podium. Um, so you can always go back and do what they do and teach us how to teach. Um, so this is um, a quote from the B or H graduate, so it's Bachelor of Religious Education and History from last year, and they said that I would highly recommend this course to anyone looking for a direct pathway into teaching profession. It's Ireland's best kept secret, and it's so true. So um, if anybody has any questions, I'm going to turn off the slideshow here, you can put them into the chat, um, and I will go back into it and see if anyone's got any questions. None so far. I'll just X out of this. Um, there were a few common questions that I just took down. Lots of people um, asked me, can you do music and English or English and history? Unfortunately, no, it's just a, a religious education and you pick your one of the three subjects, um, which is quite nice. It's a, it's a nice balance, I think. Um, some people are asking me, do you have to be Catholic? And no, you do not have to be Catholic. You don't have to be religious at all um, to be a religious educator. You're not teaching people to be Christian. You're teaching people about religion. Um, there are some questions, where can you teach? Um, so you can teach in any different schools, um, but your school context is going to be really important. So if you decide to teach in a Catholic school, then you will have to do some masses, you're going to have to take part in some events. It's a question here, how does assessment work for this course? I've looked at previous webinars saying there are no exams, but when I look at the module breakdown, there are exams. It's a bit confusing. Okay, yes. So at the moment, I am, I don't have any exams. We don't do any exams. We do our assessments. It's continuous assessment. So for example, I'll take um, eight modules going into the next semester after my placement and for those eight modules I'll have continuous assessments so that might be essays that are due halfway through the year and um, for the music ones there are performances um, there are group projects and things like that and they're all assessed and um, so they put your mark together and then um, uh, it's all done online so it's quite nice you just submit your essay and uh, yeah, there are no exams and um, there shouldn't be um, exams on the module breakdown, but it could be an old module breakdown that you might be looking at. Um, but I definitely know that there are no exams. It's all continuous assessment, unless you're doing a practical exam for music. If anyone else has any more questions, feel free to ask. Okay, I think we can finish up there. Um, perfect, thank you so much. Um, oh, there's one person typing. I'll, I'll just wait two seconds. Oh no, perfect. Okay, brilliant. Thanks so much, guys. Um, I know there is um, an option to message me privately if anyone has any more questions. I would definitely recommend this course. I love it. It's so great. Um, and to think that three years ago I was in your position is mad because I was just standing in front of a load of TYs and six year students earlier on. And it's crazy to think that here I am now. Um, but yeah, if you want to message me, definitely do. Thanks so much.